You're watching Impossible Color, and today I'm going to do another episode of Save My Photo. Today's image was submitted by Francis Timoteo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly. And what Francis wanted to focus on for this image was the colors and also improvements in the skin. So I'll be going through a number of different things, but I'll be definitely be focusing on those two components. In order to speed things up, I'm going to show you the edits that I already did in Adobe Camera Raw. And then I'll be doing the edits in Photoshop live. Okay, so this is the before. You see a lot of saturated colors here and um, some a bit of harsh lighting. And this is the after. It's a much more stylized image. Um, with some saturation brought down a bit and some stylized coloring. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I did there, you can see, is I adjusted uh, the cropping just to make this level and get rid of some of the clutter down here. And I did that just by clicking on the crop tool here. And you can rotate it uh, any way you like and you can bring the sides in and you can just hit enter. Now in the first tab here, I set the white balance to daylight. It was an outdoor shot. And you can see that I brought down the highlights that were coming off a little bit harsh in these areas. And I also increased the brightness of the shadows that were really strong throughout the image. And uh, brought up the whites a little bit and the blacks down a bit. And you can see here the saturation was brought down just a tad. So if I brought that back to what it was. And in the next tab, I didn't adjust any of the tones using the curves here, but if you go into the individual channels, I adjusted the colors. So in the darks, I added a bit of red. In the, in the lights, I had a little bit of cyan, which is the opposite side. Very subtle change, but it does make a difference. In the green channel, I did the same thing, but in the darks, I made it slightly more purple and a little bit of green added to the light areas. And in the blue channel, I went something a, a little bit more wonky in here. You can see in this lower region, at the darks, quite a bit of blue was added and kind of tapers right up to the really dark tones. And then there's a subtle S curve that add some yellow to the highlights of the image. If we go into the HSL, you can see that I brought down the red slider to make the reds a lot more pink. And I bumped the green way up so that it would get a little bit more of a cyan look to the green that I thought would complement the flowers. And nothing else too much. Just brought the, uh, the blue slightly more to the aqua side. And for the saturation, I brought the green way down. A little bit of pump for the reds, the skin where most of the orange is, slight shift down. But the big thing that was dominating the image was really the blue and I'm just going to jump back there for a second to show the before. See all the blues and purples in the sky here, really dominating the image. So when I brought those down, it made quite a difference. In the luminance tab, so this is the brightness and or darkness of each of the individual colors. And you can see I I made the leaves, the green and the leaves, brought that down a bit. Reds, oranges, and yellows helping the skin shine a little bit. Make that pop out. 
and a slight shift on the magenta as well and you can see a bit of that changing on her lips that's pretty much everything that we have just one more preview of the before and after and now let's open that up in Photoshop Okay, now that we have it set up in Photoshop, the first thing that we're going to do is work on that skin. So we're going to do some frequency separation. If you click on your background layer, simply drag it onto the new layer icon down here. And do that twice. Turn off the top one. And we're going to do a Gaussian blur on the lower one. I think a value of about 6.5 works for this image, but it will really depend on your own. Basically, you want to smooth out the skin without losing all the definition in your model. Now on the upper layer, make sure you turn that on. Go to Image and Apply Image. You want to apply it to the layer below, which in my case is called Background Copy. Set it to Subtract as the blending scale of 2 and an offset of 128. For the blending mode on that layer, choose Linear Light. I'm going to select both of these layers and just make a new group from layers so that we can see the before and after really easy. And I'm going to call this uh, Frequency Set. So if I turn that on and off, shouldn't notice any difference because I didn't do anything yet. I'm going to turn off the top one and we're going to work with the broad strokes of this lower layer and basically all we're trying to do is smooth out any blemishes in the skin. So I'm going to grab little segments like this and I'm going to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Now for each time I do this I'm just actually just gonna go control F to keep repeating it so I'm gonna smooth out this dark area here that transitions a little abruptly and we'll smooth out this light area in the face And work our way through all the skin of the body. If we get any abrupt blotches of color or tone, just want to smooth those out. Again, I'm just going Control F, which is a shortcut for applying the blur that I already did. So I'm blurring each of these little segments that I'm I'm surrounding here. Just smoothening the broad strokes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that as a first pass. We can always jump back into here later if we need to. I'm gonna pop on over to the top layer. And when I turn that on, it looks really exaggerated. Nobody actually looks like this, but it does make this job a lot easier. So when I go on that top layer, I'm going to start off by choosing the Spot Healing Brush tool. And I'm going to pick out little parts of the image that I would like to remove. So if I get little imperfections in the skin, if the model has a you know some signature mole or freckles that really define who they are, you don't want to remove all of them, but if you see anything that does look like a distraction from their features, you might want to consider just touching it out. It's a good time to get rid of any dramatic wrinkles. Fortunately, this bride has really nice skin, and there's not a lot to touch up. See any stray hairs or scratches on the skin like this here? Now's the time to work on those fine details. And if they're being a little bit stubborn, 
You can also use the patch tool. And you can use that to remove things as well. You can also use the clone stamp tool. And so far I'm liking the way that's looking. So I'm going to turn on both those layers again together and just take a quick preview. See if there's any spots that I felt could improve. It's looking good over there. Great skin over there. A few little spots. And you get the idea of how this works. You know, you might want to spend a little bit more time than that, but for the sake of the video, you can see what a difference that can make just a few minutes of your time. So that is frequency separation skin smoothing. And the objective is not to distort the, the model and make them look like someone who they're not, but just get rid of those temporary imperfections that really just distract from your portrait. So the next stage is I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to make a copy of it. Paste that down. So just to show you again what I did there, I went to copy merged and basically that copies the li everything that's shown on your image. So everything visible. And I'm going to make it copy that again by just dragging it to the new layer. And I'm going to create a layer mask on it. I'm going to apply image. And we had this set to subtract for the frequency separation. But I'm just going to set it to, to multiply, which I think is the default for it. And make sure you got the little thumbnail to the right selected. And if you click on Alt, you can see a little black and white image here. And we're going to use this black and white applied image for a special kind of sharpening. So we'll go to Filter, Stylize, Find Edges, until you get this weird looking image. And we're going to invert that. You can go to Image Adjustments Invert. And now you should see some white out outlines of all the edges of your image. We're just going to do a little bit of levels adjustments. So we're only seeing those outlines. And because this is on our layer mask, wherever it's white is where we're going to apply our sharpen. So I want to apply the sharpen only where I see the white areas, which are the edges. That's why we did the find edges. And you'll notice when you release that, it shows a little bit more detail than you saw in the preview. So just be aware. Now I'm going to click on the actual image, not the mask. And this is where we're going to apply the sharpen. If you go to filter, sharpen, and I'm going to use unsharp mask. And I'm going to crank the amount up all the way to 500. In the preview, you can kind of have a peek of what effect it's having. And the radius shows how far out you want to sharpen. Don't go too crazy with the radius. And likewise with the threshold, it says up to what threshold do you want to apply this amount? Now, if you turn it off, it just applies it everywhere. I'm going to set it to 2. So if I turn that on and off, it's subtle, but you can see a shift. So basically what that is saying is wherever I have the white on my layer mask, apply the sharpen. So you can see that it's actually black for most of the skin. So it's not going to sharpen the skin, which would 
you know, it look kind of bad picking up every little detail, but you do want to sharpen the eyes and all the fine details that make the model come alive. So I'm gonna, just going to do a little bit of refinement and paint, paint in some a little bit extra black on the skin here, just so this doesn't show up too much. I wouldn't mind seeing a few sparkles, so I'll leave some in there. And I'm actually going to paint in a little bit of white on those eyes just to help them pop even more. It's going to look weird in here, but that doesn't matter. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the effect of the sharpen. And in order to make those eyes pop a little bit more, one of the tricks that I do is I also sharpen the jewelry. So I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening, just painting white on the layer mask where this jewelry is. And that little bit of sparkle just kind of builds a relationship with the eyes and helps it all pop. So there you go. That's all the steps that I'll be doing in Photoshop. And just to show you some before and after, this is the frequency separation that we applied to smooth out the skin. And this is the sharpen that we applied. That's it. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. I hope that, Francis, you enjoyed your Save My Photo makeover. Thanks again for submitting. It's a great image. If anyone else wants to send their images for another edition of Save My Photo, please send them along. You can send a comment in the section below. And if you felt this was useful and worth something, please give me a thumbs up or you could subscribe to the channel. See you next week.